Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to talk about deep speed. So I think you guys have seen my video, which was on VLLM. But in this video, I want to specifically talk about what is deep speed? How useful is it in inference? How does it work? And is it better than VLLM when it comes to model inference or not? So let's start. So let's start what the problems deep speed found in existing inference systems. So it came up with three things, right? What are the factors that, uh, you know, impact the forward pass of a single large language model? Second question, how does a model throughput respond to changing the number of tokens in the forward pass? And the third question, how should a pool of tokens be scheduled to, across multiple forward passes? These are the three questions that needed to be answered and deep speed does it very beautifully. I will link down the paper also in uh, description as usual. You guys can go and read about it in detail. So the first thing is that factors impacting the forward pass of single language models. So, you know, when you want to run a large language model efficiently, you need to schedule how it processes the data, right? And uh, the most important thing to focus on is the number of tokens that the model processes at one time, right? Whether you process many sequences of few uh, sequences doesn't matter as much. What really matters is the total number of tokens. So a good scheduler just needs to keep track of the total number of tokens being processed in each step, in each pass, right? So this is a very, very important thing. You can see token latency is predominantly determined by the number of forward tokens rather than the patch size. Second thing is, you know, operating uh, regions of the lang language model. Let's say the large language models works differently, definitely on how many tokens it's processing. We just talked few tokens. Let's say when there are a few tokens, the GPU spends a lot of time just getting the model ready from memory. So in this case, adding new more tokens makes the process faster because the GPU isn't doing much heavy computation yet, right? But for the case of many tokens, when there are a lot of tokens, the GPU is busy doing heavy calculations, right? So that's the key. And uh, when you have a lot of tokens, uh, you know, at this point, adding more tokens doesn't make it work any faster because it's already working as fast as, as it can. So for maximum efficiency, you want to keep the number of tokens high enough that the GPU is always, always busy doing calculations rather than just loading the data. So that's the case. Now there comes the con uh, concept of dynamic split views. Actually there is, uh, you know, these three, these two things are very important when it comes to dynamic split views because there are two operations that is performed by dynamic split views. I will tell you exactly what is written in the paper for dynamic split views. Di a deep speed fast gen is built to leverage continuous batching and non-contiguous KB caches to enable increased occupancy and high responsibility for serving large language models in data centers. So what does it do? It introduces split views, which leverages dynamic prompt and generation decomposition and unification to further improve contiguous batching and system throughput. Okay, let's uh, talk about it in detail. So let's consider the first thing that is handling long prompts. L just imagine you have a very long piece of text that you want the model to process. So in that case, dynamic split views break this long text into smaller, more manageable pieces, right? Now these pieces are then processed one at a time. Importantly, only the very last piece is used to actually generate the final output, like an answer or uh, continuation of the text. So this was the first thing, long prompts. Second is short prompts. Similarly, let's take an example. If you have a short piece of text, dynamic split views tries to combine it with the other pieces to reach a specific number of tokens it wants to process at once. Even, even if the short text needs to be broken down further, dynamic split views does this to make sure it is, you know, perfectly matching this target. The, the number of tokens it has decided. Now, this ensures that each processing round is as efficient as possible, you know, making the best use case of the current GPU capability because that is where we are lagging. So in, in short, if I, I would like to tell you what is dynamic split views, it optimizes the model performance by breaking down longer text into smaller parts and combining these smaller parts to hit an ideal number of tokens for processing. So this way, each round of processing is efficient and makes full use of the GPU capability. Right now, just, just see this, this is a simple illustration from the paper, you know, it, it is telling continuous batching strategies. So each block shows the execution of a forward pass. So here the arrow is indicating, you know, as I'm reading from the paper directly, an arrow indicates the forward pass that has sequences with one or more tokens generated. So VLLM here performs either token generations or prompt processing in forward pass token generation, uh, you know, you know, uh, prompt processing 
and orca here i think you guys know about orca runs prompts at their complete at their complete uh, length alongside generation now here in dynamic split fuse things are different it performs dynamic composition of fixed size batches composed of both generation and prompt tokens right cool now how is it better so these are the major three points you know when you spend uh, send a long piece of text to pro to be processed it doesn't take for forever to be response right so by splitting long text into smaller chunks the model now can handle obviously them faster than the previous techniques so this means you get answers more quickly because the model can complete more task in the same amount of time second thing is higher efficiency so when dealing with short pieces of text the system combines them to reach an ideal number of tokens as we already talked so this keeps the model working in its most efficient state you know let's say i am working in an industry uh, in, in a factory so my worker would want you know he is already working for one hour let's not let, let him take the break and let's not uh, let him uh, you know e even for a second not focus on the task for one hour if he is working let him you know uh, let's give us give him all the work that is possible so that he can perform the best in that one hour and you know the rest of the time we are not using him in only so the time till you are using the gpu just use make the full utilization of it the last thing is lower variance and better consistency you know since the processing chunks are uh, more uniform in size i would say the time it takes to process each chunk is obviously more predictable so this means you won't experience random delays the response times are steady and re reliable so there are no interruptions or long running tasks that causes delay so in summary I, if i would say dynamic speed m2 uh, yeah m i i actually i would say <laughs> makes the model more responsive by breaking down long texts right so now if you see throughput and latency of text generation through uh, using llama 270 billion this is from their paper uh, they have you know done the tensile parallelism across 4 880 gb gpus so a normal distribution was applied to prompt and you can see the results so it it looks quite good right compared to vllm deep speed looks quite good uh, similarly they have done, done done it again now this is the architecture of deep speed fast gen so i want to let you guys know deep speed had the deep speed then it came deep speed fast gen these two are working kind of similarly from in some part but kind of different in some other parts so for inference part you currently we use deep speed m2 okay cool and now the point is vllm versus deep speed who is the winner here uh, according to the paper uh, or or let's say the github of uh, uh, v uh, deep speed fast gen you will see that deep speed is much much but much better than vllm they are saying 2.3 times 2 times is it so uh, so it's not it's it's not a correct uh, answer if i say true or false it is you know sort of con condition or situation based answer right so let's talk about the key differences between vllm and fast gen in terms of performance optimization so uh, deep speed fast gen adopts a obviously conservative sub optimal memory allocation uh, which based memory and output lengths are large similarly uh, the current so dynamic split fuse, uh, split uh, fuse scheduling gives uh, speed up only when prompt lengths are much larger than the output lengths so in this case you will see deep speed fast gen outperforms when the workload is constant consistently long prompts and short output in other scenari scenarios vllm shows superior performance so obviously if vllm is uh, if deep speed is claiming something vllm also uh, came up with their explanation that okay we also did the benchmark which they are saying and uh, obviously in one case where the there is long prompt and short output we as the vllm saying we are not able to outperform deep speed that's true but you know it's not that much 3.5 to 3.7 2.6 to 2.67 it's not that much okay deep speed is sometimes faster but not that much and in other cases you know deep speed is not no nowhere close to vllm you can see the difference so this particular case long prompt and short output you can say deep speed is better than vllm now the point is i am also a machine learning engineer we can't directly rely on papers or the benchmarks presented by the owners of the organizations we decided that okay we are going to benchmark this ourselves what we did is uh, we came with this scenario only let's say long prompts and short output because i currently work on rack pipelines right so we came up with this that we are going to do this so i did an internal test my benchmarking on the rack pipeline let's say long text and short output in that particular case i would say yes deep speed is faster than vllm the re request per minute was 5% faster the median was 8.6% faster the average was 5% faster and the p95 that is percentile 95 was 13.6% better than vllm and the failure rate was also 22% less so yeah that that was the case uh, 
I did it on a very very big benchmark. So it's it's not like we I did it on a very small benchmark. No, I took a very big benchmark, and this is done specifically for this case, long prompt and short output. And for the other cases that I did, uh, I didn't do a specific benchmark, but the testing which I did, uh, a small testing, I was finding VLLM to be much faster than Deep Speed M2. So yeah, you can say kind of this holds true what VLLM is uh, saying than Deep Speed, which is saying claiming that okay we are you know faster than uh, VLLM so yeah so conclusions were uh, what I did is I did rephrasing in QA and deep speed is 15% faster than VLLM and the context was was 2000 and I used 48 GPUs so this was some benchmarking that we did and I would re request you guys you guys can go and check this links the github benchmarking code that they have presented VLLM and VLLM and deep speed uh, official page where, where they have compared both of them yeah now yeah that was it from my side guys i hope you guys learned something new and uh, i would request you guys to suggest you know what kind of videos you guys expect or want me to produce so that you guys can benefit from it and so can i so thank you and have a nice day